fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one that the happy people has to say. And that's the truth. Take California champions, for instance. Now, way out west, you'll hear us talking about a quarterback we call Van Brocklin, a passing star with weedy style who throws that ball a country mile. And Duke Snyder, too, is a West Coast man, a fancy slugger and a Wheaties fan who takes his bat and scares them all when he knocks the hide right off the ball. Now, these two champions know that there's big energy in their favorite cereal because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do, 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 and okay, okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! The cowboys poured out of the pot hook bunkhouse as soon as they heard the shooting out on the range. But a band of hooded black coat riders were already circling the bunkhouse, and the men were driven back inside. They were held there, besieged for two hours. And then, as suddenly as they had come, the hooded riders disappeared into the night. Hank Greenway, who had bought the pot hook only a month before, had made his money in land speculation and his reputation as a politician. He was in San Felipe on the night of the raid and rode out to the ranch the next morning. Oh, oh, hey, oh, boy, oh. He found his foreman and his nearest neighbor, Jake Webb of the Lazy W, studying the ground in front of the ranch house. Howdy, boss. Morning, Evans. Morning, Webb. Howdy. I guess you've heard. Yes, I've heard. How many head we lose? Only 50, boss. Shorty's pinto was shot and he got a bullet in his shoulder. You were lucky, Hank. Lucky? Why didn't you trail the rustlers, Jim? Well, they had a big start on us, boss. We lost the trail in the hills. How long has this sort of thing been going on here? We haven't been troubled with rustlers for a long time. But it may be more than rustlers we have to contend with. How do you figure that? Look here. Look what one of them scratched on the ground. Hmm. Just a lot of lines. It's supposed to be a spider's web. There's a T in the middle. It stands for the tarantula. Who says it does? Why, you must have heard of the tarantula, boss. I know he's been accused of every unsolved crime in the territory, but personally, I don't believe there is such a person. Boss, it's... What I mean is he can't be to blame for everything he's accused of. But this raid last night, there were 30 men that was well organized. A spider's web. Hmm. Your name is Webb, Jake. You're not accusing me of... No, no, no. I have a better idea. Those black cloaks and the hoods... That's the kind of a fancy rigmarole that would appeal to foreigners. Foreigners? There are no foreigners around here. What about Don Rodrigo, Salvador, Martinez? They're American citizens. Their fathers swore allegiance. And Congress was stupid enough to recognize their old Spanish grants. And let them keep their land. But they never liked their ranchos being cut down to the original size. Once they owned this whole valley, they'd like nothing better than to get it back. The more I think of it, the more likely it seems. Rodrigo, Salvador, Martinez. They could get together, dress their men up in black cloaks and hoods, leave the sign of the tarantula behind them so they wouldn't be suspected, and then go on to rob us blind, 
strip us of our cattle so we'd have to sell out to them for a dime on the dollar. You've only lost 50 heads so far. Well, we'll see what happens from now on. You'll see that I'm right. Events seemed to fulfill Greenway's prophecy. There were more raids. The next attack was on the Lazy W by the same black-robed men. A hundred head were driven off. Then came raids on the Circle A, the Arrow, and the Diamond T. And wherever Greenway went in San Felipe, he voiced his accusation. Don Rodrigo, Salvato, Martinez. They haven't lost a head. But there's always the sign of the tarantula, Mr. Greenway. All right, go ahead. Believe in your phony bad man if you want to. I'm getting in touch with Washington. I'm going to the Capitol myself. I'm going to demand that those old land grants be canceled. It was on the same day that the Lone Ranger rode into San Felipe. He wore trail clothes, a stained deerskin jacket, and his face was covered by a heavy growth of black beard. With Tonto's help, he had assumed the appearance of a man called Tex Rafferty. The Lone Ranger was offering himself as a target in order to learn the tarantula's real identity. As he rode down the main street of San Felipe, his hat was pulled down over his eyes. His shoulders were hunched and he slumped in the saddle. A big man who seemed to be trying to make himself as small as possible. But he dismounted in front of one of the busiest cafes and entered the place. Yato forced his way to the bar. Pardon me, please. Thank you. Pardon me. Well, what'll it be, stranger? I'd like some information. Hey, you're not a stranger. Oh, who says I'm not? I do. I've never seen you before in my life. Well, I've seen you. I guess you've never been in San Felipe before. I didn't say that. No. No Durango. What about Durango? There was a bank hold up there about a year ago. Four men took part in it. Three of them belonged to the tar- tarantulas gang. The fourth was a big Texan. Well, sir, this Texan double-crossed the others. They were killed, and he made off with all the loot. The next day, there was a note pinned to the sheriff's door. It said, you leave Tex Rafferty to me. And it was signed with the tarantula's will. That's interesting. Yeah. The tarantula swore to kill Tex Rafferty. You got a lot of nerve, mister. I think so. Coming back here? Or maybe you haven't heard that the tarantula's operating in these spots. Thanks. You've given me all the information I need. The Lone Ranger allowed himself to be seen in most of the cafes in town. And from the glances and whispers, he knew that he had been identified in each of them as Tex Rafferty. His next move was to rent a room in Mrs. O'Brien's boarding house on the edge of town. Then the Lone Ranger left his saddlebags and rode out of town to the woods where Tonto had made camp. Oh, oh, oh easy, silly big fellow. Yeah. Oh, what happened, Kimotabi? They just guys worked. They think I'm Tex Rafferty. That mean tarantula try kill you. There's a strange situation in town, Tonto. Some people think it isn't the tarantula who's behind the raids on the valley ranches. A man named Greenway has accused Don Rodrigo of being responsible. Oh, that not so. Him, good man. And a fine American. No, I don't believe it. I think we've come to the right place to find the tarantula. Oh, now about tonight. Uh-huh. I've taken a room at Mrs. O'Brien's boarding house. It's on the ground floor in the back. The window will be open. The bed can be seen easily. If someone tries to kill me, you must follow him. Sooner or later, he'll report to the tarantula. That will give us the clue we need. You be careful, Kimasabi. Yes, Tonto. I intend to be. The sky was clouded that night. Shortly before 12, a man dismounted near the stables in the rear of Mrs. O'Brien's boarding house. He crept around the corner of the stables and stopped for a moment to watch the house. There was only one light upstairs. The man walked straight to an open window on the lower floor. Inside the room, he could see a cot and a bulky form beneath the blankets. The man took a pencil out of his pocket and drew the picture of a spider's web on the windowsill. In the center, he placed a tea. 
Then he unholstered his gun, took deliberate aim at the bed, and fired six shots into the blankets. He turned and ran, leaped to his saddle, and galloped away. A moment later, Mrs. O'Brien knocked on the door of the Lone Ranger's room. Mr. Smith! Are you all right? Mr. Smith! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing old cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. As Mrs. O'Brien continued to knock on the door of his room, the Lone Ranger rose from a chair in the far corner. Are you all right? Yes, Mrs. O'Brien, I'm fine. Oh, I heard shooting. Uh, someone outside. I'll be leaving early in the morning. Oh, good luck to you then. Good night. The Lone Ranger fingered the bullet holes in the blanket. And that's the end of Tex Rafferty. The rest is up to Tonto. The Lone Ranger lit a lamp. He shaved off his beard and changed his clothes. Then he adjusted his mask and sat by the window, waiting. It was nearly morning when he heard Tonto outside. He slipped through the window and hurried to the Indian's side. Well, Tonto? Me follow him, all right. Where'd he lead you? You know Waterfall on Don Rodrigo's land? Yes. There's a cave behind it, isn't there? Ah. This fellow ride through Waterfall into cave. Me wait. Pretty soon him come out with other fellow. First fella, head back to town. Me fella, second fella. Good idea. Him ride to Pothook Ranch. Pothook? Ah. Greenway owns it. Could that be the answer to the whole mystery? Me not know. But the two men met in the cave behind the waterfall on Don Rodrigo's property. Ah. Man plenty afraid when him go there. <laughs> and it's true what they've been saying about the Don. Kimasabi, me remember about cave. What? Their tunnel lead from cave... The cellars under Rancho. Yes, I remember Don Rodrigo speaking about it. Me wonder what in cave now. So do I. It's nearly morning. Too late to investigate it now. We'll have to do it tonight. Uh, that'd be good. I'll get Silver saddled and we'll ride back to camp. woods between the waterfall and Don Rodrigo's rancho. And it was there the Lone Ranger and Tonto left Silver and Scout the following night. They slipped through the tinkling waterfall and into the cavern behind it. The opening was large enough for a man on horseback, and the cavern itself was huge and echoing. It was also pitch black, but the Lone Ranger had a small lantern, and he lit it. Then the masked man and the Indian proceeded with their investigation. The cavern seemed to be completely empty, but as the Lone Ranger held the lantern high, its light fell on two large chests in a far corner. We'll see what's in them. Look. Mm. The Lone Ranger held up a black cloak and a hood. Mm. That's what tarantula's men wear. Yes, this must be their headquarters. But on Don Rodrigo's property... Mm. Otto, as I remember it, there's an iron door that leads from here into the tunnel. I want to look at that door. Uh, me show you. It down passage over this way. Tonto led the way down a narrow, curving passage in the rock wall. At the end of it, a heavy iron door barred the way. There. Tunnel beyond door lead to cellars. But this door hasn't been opened in years. That's right. That's all I wanted to know. 
Now we'll go to the dawn and... Kimasabi, put out lantern. Men, horses, come into cave. Quickly, the masked man blew out the lantern. He and Tonto waited in the dark passage as more and more men and horses entered the cavern. Finally, they heard a voice raised above the others. Men, I don't want any slip up tonight. That's Greenway. I was standing next to him in a cafe yesterday. Him, Tarantula. All the evidence points that way. He must be. This will be our last job. You know, we'll go after the bottle tonight. Why well, pick on your own spread, boss? Because it's a smart thing to do. Shoot up the bunkhouse, drive off a few head of cattle. You don't have to do much damage. After you come back here, get rid of your clothes and hood. I'll ride into town and get the sheriff. My story will be that I followed you to your hideout. I'll show him the cloak, point out that this is Don Rodrigo's property, the man to be arrest the old man. You'll have to. That's all I'll need to put over my deal with Congress. That means you'll be going straight, boss? <laughs> Only long enough to grab this land. Don't worry, we'll be opening a few more banks before long. All right, let's go. The Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the men in black hoods and cloaks right away from the opening of the cavern. Then they returned to Silver and Scout. Look, Tonto. There's high rocky ground on the far side of the waterfall. There are the woods on this side. With enough men, we could turn the tarantula's headquarters into a trap to catch him. Now, Jake Webb will remember you from the time you warned him of the Apache uprising. That's right. Get to his place as fast as you can. Tell him what we've found out. Ask him to rout up as many of the ranchers as he can during the next hour. Lead them to the high ground over there. Had them leave their horses on the far side of the ridge and take cover among the rocks. You go see Don Rodrigo? Yes, at once. I'll have him station his men in these woods to wait for the gang's return. There's one thing, Kimosabe. Maybe all men not come back to cave. Maybe Greenway rides straight to town. I'll try to think of a way to lead them all back here. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. There were guards at the gate of the Rodrigo Rancho, and their guns were drawn as the Lone Ranger rode up. But they were old servants of the Don and recognized the masked man. They summoned the ranchero. When he had heard the Lone Ranger's news and his plans for the tarantula's capture, he consented at once. Oh, one more detail. Anything you ask, senor. The door that leads into the cavern from the tunnel, it's barred. Oh, see, since the time of the last Indian uprising, it was used to escape from the rancho. I want to use it as an escape from the cave. I do not understand. I'm going to try and lead the whole gang back to the cave. I'm going to let them see me enter it. I'm quite sure they'll come after me. Oh, and you will leave by the tunnel. And bar the door after me. Then your men and the ranchers can seal the opening of the cave with gunfire. Oh, see, the tarantula will be caught in his own web. Let's hope it works out that way. Well, adios. Vaya con Dios. Easy, steady, big fellow. Bon silver. Once more, the pothook bunkhouse was being besieged, with the pothook's owner directing the operations. At last, Greenway's lieutenant rode up, with the man who had been assigned to driving off the cattle. And now the band was all together once more. Hey, where'd that shot come from? Boss, at the top of the rise behind us, a rider on a wet horse. All right, get that man. He's going over the ridge. Come on, after him. Get up, get up. Get up. Get up. Lone Ranger looked back at the outlaw gang as they swept over the rise after him. He judged Silver's pace so as to keep just out of gun range, and he headed straight for Don Rodrigo's property. Come on, Silver! The outlaws lashed their horses, trying to overtake the flying white stallion. At the top of the gully, the outlaws saw the Lone Ranger standing beside the waterfall. He was dismounted. Silver was just disappearing in the woods, and then the Lone Ranger disappeared. He's gone into the cave. Good, we have him cornered. But, boss... What's the matter, afraid of a cornered rat? Now, we'll get him. The outlaws, still wearing their cloaks and hoods, dismounted beside the waterfall. At a command from Greenway... Follow me! They plunged through the thin veil of the waterfall, their guns blazing. They searched the walls and the floors of the cavern with their bullets, until Greenway called a halt. That's enough. You must have got him. That passage over there. 
He found it. He's in there. He must be. I'll blast him out. Now we'll see. There's no one here. Uh, the door's still barred. Yeah, but it's been opened. I don't like the looks of this. Let's get out of here. Greenway, followed by the outlaw band, hurried through the cavern. Just as he reached the watery curtain that covered the opening, a voice stopped him. What? Boss, that was Jake Webb. He's calling on you to surrender. I'll show him. After me, man! He plunged through the waterfall. At the sight of a hooded figure with a six-shooter in either hand, 50 guns blasted the silence of the night, and Greenway pitched headfirst into the shallow creek that ran down the hill from the waterfall. The tarantula was dead. With their leader dead, the outlaws had no desire to brave the deadly hail of bullets that were sure to greet them if they tried to escape. They obeyed when Jake Webb ordered them to come out with their hands up. Their hands were tied behind their backs, and they were mounted on their horses. The ranchers and Don Rodrigo's men formed a solid guard around them as they headed for town. The tarantula's lieutenant rode between Jake Webb, who led his horse, and Don Rodrigo. Don Rodrigo. See, Senor Evans. It's a good thing there's someone like the masked man around to make us realize the truth. That it isn't the way a man talks that makes him a good American. It's the way he acts. The uh, masked man you're talking about. Did that rider we followed, the one on the white horse, did he wear a mask? Yes, he did. Then he must have been... That's right. He was the Lone Ranger. <laughs> copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.